Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome. Uh, I am in the craft room. Sorry about my phone there. There's nothing I can do about this today. Uh, welcome to Elizabeth Craft Designs. I am live but not live, so this is pre-recorded because I will be doing uh, Create and Craft TV about the same time, at least close to the same time as this live. So I have pre-recorded this over the weekend for you guys. So just know that. And if you leave comments or ask me questions, I'm not actually live with you to watch them. I can come back later and check and answer anything that you're asking about. Um, but that's why if you don't see an answer, you know, it's because it's pre-recorded. So welcome, welcome. Uh, I am very excited because this is my third release with Elizabeth Craft Designs, and it is my very first paper collection. So a paper collection, eight dies, and three stamp sets, and I can't wait to share. So, um, gosh, I have so much to show you. It was, the hardest thing here was to get all these beautiful samples in order from my team, uh, plus to add some that weren't shipped to me that I can show you through my little software here. Uh, so it was really hard to sort them all and put them into categories because as you'll see, this whole line this time uh, mixes and matches in so many ways. It's not like we can just show you one die and say, here, here's what you can do with it. You'll see. You'll see. So let's get right to it. What I'm going to do is show you everything in the new collection first, and then I'll go back and show you all the samples. And then if we have time, hopefully, I will make a little uh, like project little demo. Okay, so let's get right to it. So paper collection first, Harmonious Hodgepodge. A funny name. <laughs> Some people might not even know the word hodgepodge, but basically it means sort of a miss, mix and match kind of situation. So uh, even though this mixes and matches and is very different in its nature, it does it is very harmonious. It goes together really well, as you'll see. And so the idea behind this paper collection was uh, for it to be timeless, for it to work for a lot of masculine or feminine projects or a little bit of in-between. Um, so that was always the goal when I designed it. So I hope that you like it. We'll just flip through each page really quick. Of course, here is your cover sheet. And our first page is a lovely olive green color, has a lot of ferns in the background from my fern die from the second release, has some dictionary back there, and then these wonderful uh, kind of vintage looking butterflies. And I like to fussy cut, some people really do, so I wanted to give that option in some of these pages, as you'll see. So that's the first page there. And then we have this beautiful one, which I call cherry blossoms. I'm not, I don't really know my flowers very well, but I think that's what they are. And it's just so beautiful. There's clusters of these beautiful flowers. And then there's sort of like ledger kind of numbers back there, a little bit of stuff in the background. I had a lot of fun composing these papers by putting layers together like that. And on the back side of this one is a very soft vintage pink, kind of a diamond pattern, a little bit of circle on sort of an ivory background so that's fun this one i like to refer to as the stained glass paper <laughs> let me put this to the side uh, because that's what it kind of looks like to me it sort of looks like stained glass it's just a really cool bubbly kind of pattern with some greens and some blues a little bit of yellow and ivory um, really fun as you'll see from the samples coming and then this side is sort of a multi blue tint uh, stripe with a floral kind of faded in the background, kind of a vintage wallpapery kind of look to that one. This one is that same pattern we saw with the pink, but now it's in a red and ivory. So really nice medium kind of dark red. And then on the back side is a wonderful dot with that same red on sort of an ivory background. Uh, you know, for me, I can always use a good dot pattern or grid pattern or something like that. Very useful. And so this one is a border page, as you can see, lots of different mixtures of borders, a vintage ruler there, some, some, um, I guess that's from a ledger, uh, just really fun. Some music notes. Some of this stuff is actually pulled from some of the papers, as you'll see in the designs. 
Uh, this one in particular, this border comes from my Fancy Flourishes die. So we just use that same imagery to make a nice fun border. And they're all different widths and thick thicknesses, so they're very fun to incorporate in your projects. And then there we go with the grid. This is that same red on sort of a speckly ivory background. Super nice. This one is another grid, and we've incorporated, again, my flourishes. There, if you recognize my dies from the very first release, the fancy flourishes are in the background. We got some paint splatter, uh, of course, a bee here, and some green foliage, and super nice. This is sort of a teal blue, and then this side is an olive blue and ivory stripe. And in the olive, there's sort of a textured little background there, super nice. And you'll see this olive and this blue kind of repeat in papers like this one here is a nice olive with a ivory pattern. Kind of a fun little pattern, diamond pattern and some crisscrosses there. Really pretty. And then the back side is just a nice large polka dot. I would say these polka dots are about an eighth of an inch big on an ivory background. So those are super fun. And then we have our very romantic rose paper here that has music note in the background, some more of my paint splatters, some diamond pattern kind of fading in the background. This is a nice soft kind of parchmenty pink color. And then we have on the back some, I would say, little doilies. So they are my doilies from the first release, the large doilies, I believe. So, no, actually, I think it's a small doily. So you will see that they kind of repeat all the styles. And then I added the little dingbat in the middle there just for something fun. But you'll see something cool that you can do with this particular pattern paper. All right, this one is my notebook page, and it has my large doilies kind of worked in the background. So pretty. And then we've got some fussy cut imagery if you like, or you can just use the whole thing. You'll see there's some cards and things coming in the samples that show you a lot of uses for those fussy cuts. And this is a background. Really pretty. There's a lot going on in this page. Super fun. And then this side is, uh, let's see, if you can you see this from your color? is it looks a little gray on screen to me, but honestly, it's a really nice, like a blue jean color. And there's sort of a, like a linen texture in the denim. And then of course we have some little bees snuck in there and then some florals. And at the bottom, this is kind of unusual for a paper collection page, but uh, I have added just this one bottom half that has this scalloped kind of treatment at the bottom. And you'll see where that's really fun to cut a piece of that and put it on a card as a border. Okay, and then this is pretty exciting. I know a lot of paper collections come out with little three by fours, but I wanted something that we could just use for like journaling or some backgrounds to other things and frames. So if you remember my first release stamp sets, there were three different stamp frames that you could use. So some of these are those same ones and then I've added a few. And then we've added some color and we got some coffee stained paper going in the background. But these are super nice, you'll see on the samples, to just pop on the inside of a card or even the front for your message, for some journaling or what have you. And then this side is a somewhat of a honeycomb, I would say, and it's a very pretty blue with a little texture in that blue background. Got some paint splatters again. And some of those little honeycomb pieces have been colored in with some greens and blues. This is a nice soft blue color. And then this one, another notebook page. Got a little bit of a very small grid going back here. It's probably hard to pick up on. More paint splatters. Got some blue rules for your notebook paper here. And then some paint. You know, I just had so much fun just making this paper because you know, I was actually making like paint splatters and scanning them and all that stuff and then pulling in these vintage images, which again are great for fussy cuts or just like backgrounds of pages or cards or planner pages. You got this beautiful long wide border at the bottom of this one. On the back side is a wonderful grid with that nice red color with a little bit of texture in it and then an ivory kind of grid line print to it. Okay, and then finally, no, two more. This one, 
probably one of my favorites. So it's a rose pattern with a lot of leaves and buds and roses. It's on sort of a linen textured background. It's not quite ivory. It's a little bit more parchment color. It's really nice. And then all these roses are outlined in that red color that has been repeating through the collection. And then the inside is sort of an off-white. So you could color these in. You could, you know, add a sparkly marker to them. You could watercolor in there if you wanted to. Uh, it's really just a very beautiful page. And you're going to see a mini album that I created that kind of showcases that paper. The back side is a beautiful olive pink and red and ivory stripe. And the olive has that beautiful kind of filigree pattern in the background. A lot of flourishes. Really pretty. You'll see in the samples how that looks. And then this finally is the last sheet. So this has all kinds of stuff going on in it. A big pattern of what we saw earlier, but much bigger here. A very, very soft romantic pink color. Uh, we have ledger kind of in the background, just softly ghosted back there. Some more paint splatters. And then some floral imagery here with a little moth. Pretty. And then uh, finally on the back is a nice diamond pattern that's sort of a mix of olive and just like grass, not quite grass green, a little bit deeper, a um, little diamond pattern with a burlap texture all underneath there. All right, so that's it for the paper collection. I hope you like that. Now we'll talk about dyes. And in no particular order, because like I said, I'm going to show you all the dyes first and then I'm going to show you the samples. So um, this is called Succulents and Pots, and this is how the packaging will look. This is exactly what I send to Elizabeth Craft Designs. They take a picture of it, and this is what you'll see on the packaging so that you recognize it. But you will see that you have a lot of different options here. And when you see the samples, you'll see it's just crazy how many things you can do with this. But it's super fun because all the pots are separate. All the plants are separate. Even these little tiny flowers are separate. Uh, this one in particular has a little texture in the dye where you can see those little speckly spots on a cactus like you would. Uh, super fun. So that is succulents and pots. And then we have a classic alphabet. Uh, I know we have other alphabets within the company, but this one is just your standard classic serif font um, alphabet. And you have your upper and your lower. As you can see, you have all your numbers, and then you have some punctuation and things like that that are super fun. And you'll see on the samples why this is really nice, because you're about to see that we have some words, word dies coming. But, some, you know, there's sometimes there's words that we just can't put them all. We can't put all the words. So this is where this comes in handy. You'll see. So classic alphabet, I'm going to just put these here. And then this one is called Fancy Cutaways. And these are about exactly the size of an ATC card, right? So they're two and a half by three and a half. And I will say right now that if you don't have my original postage stamp die set from the first release, you really want to get it before you do anything with this set. Not this set alone, the collection. You'll see. But these fit perfectly within the large postage stamp of my postage stamp set. And uh, again, the samples will speak for themselves. But these are just super fun cutaway items that you can see through. Uh, lots and lots of opportunities for some fun things here. Okay, this one I called Twiggy Things, which I think is kind of a fun name. But they're all different kinds of grapevine wreaths, right? So frames that you can use, a uh, heart, which would be something, maybe a wreath that you'd hang on a door, and then another wreath here that's just round. And of course you have the bow, and I included some little succulents and this little spray of um, like an air plant to go with it. So that's just repeated down here, but you'll get different sizes of these in the die set that you can layer together and make little succulents. So um, I can't wait to share the samples on that one. It's super fun. This one is called Circles, Banners, and Ribbons. And, you know, it's one of those basic sets, but we don't have anything like that yet. So I was thinking, you know, for all of us who want to find all those different size circle punches all the time when I'm doing class projects and people are looking for a 7 8 inch 
punch, you know, this is the answer to uh, needing all those different circle punches. Now you have all these dies. So you see three here. That just shows you those three nest together nicely. But then there's one, two, three, four more down here. And then there's um, like starburst ones that nest inside each other. There's this sort of badge one. These two look like badges to me. Some more starburst ones that go together. Of course, this one here, you'll see in the samples. This layers together, there's a triple layer here, and then of course you have this fun double kind of ribbon situation here. So just watch, watch for the samples on that. Okay, and who doesn't love a good old border? This is borders and trims. I did borders last time, the lace borders, and um, a lot of requests were made to make them as long as a planner page. So these are definitely that long this time, for sure. And we have all these different options. I like to sew and stitch. And so I thought these would be really fun to add to those types of projects. But then again, going back to your masculine kind of themes, there's a rope there, there's a chain, there's waves, and then things that can be used either way, you know, uh, super, super fun and versatile set. And that's why, you know, my line is called Everyday Elements because we need those types of things all the time not just a themed seasonal thing. Uh, this one is called Everyday Words 3. And you know, if you've been with me for a while, you know we do have one and two. And I'm not saying this is the last one either because this is great. We can keep building and building to this set. So you can combine some of these words with some of these now, uh, definitely. So we have you know, we have happy again, which we had in another set, but I felt like it needed to be included in this just in case you were buying for the first time and you just wanted one set to get started. So we put happy in there again. We've got fathers, mothers, Valentine's and day, happy holidays, anniversary with sympathy. You're so very and the, I was going to make a card or something like a month ago. And I was like, I can't believe I don't have the word very. <laughs> so I did add it. So you could you know, put, um, let's see, here's a good example. Like the word your, your, and you can go back to this one if you have it, your sweet on the front of a card. Um, thanks, very, very grateful. You know, <laughs> they definitely can combine very easily. Okay, and then one of my favorites is the layered butterfly. You know me with my layered bee and my layered bird. Uh, the owl, so we had to have a butterfly, of course, and, and we can never get tired of butterflies, right? So what you're seeing here is a stamp right there, and that's what I'm about, about to show you next. But this is the actual die set, and it will say right on the packaging that it coordinates with uh, the stamp set Love and Roses, which I'm about to show you. But what we do have here are options to build a butterfly two different ways. So this is an overlay on a base butterfly, and so is this one. And believe me when I say I hand drew all these little openings in this one to make this die. So that was super fun. And then, of course, we have a die, two, three, four dies that go with the stamps coming up. So I'll show you that because we got a lot of requests before uh, when we did my first B uh, stamp set. People wanted a die to go with it. So these are different size. These will not work with the old set. These are two different sizes now than what we've seen before. And then of course we have this lovely fern. I don't know what kind of fern that is, but it's just so pretty. And you'll see on the samples that people use that a lot. It's really nice. Okay, so speaking of the stamp set, first one up, Love and Roses. This is what she looks like. And the samples will really speak for themselves. But here you see, this is the B the larger B and the smaller B. So the die cutting out these two B's here. And then the same with these two butterflies here. The dies go for those two butterflies. So that's super fun, but you, you'll see, we have this lovely, this is like a favorite of the team and it looks really light on this printout, but it is, it stamps nice and dark. Uh, so we have that lovely collaged uh, rose. And then we have, again, my Fancy flourishes in now a stamp form and much smaller, which is beautiful for background stamping and embossing and all kinds of stuff. We've got a crown to put over the bee, 
And we've got the definition of the word love there. We got this cute little bingo card with a B as the free space in the middle, of course. So that is love and roses. Then we have phrases and dingbats. Now this one goes great with the circles. And I think it even says in the packaging, the one with the circles, banners, and ribbons. Um, you'll see. And dingbats, if you haven't heard of that term, that's usually these little dudes like this, right? Just little symbols that are small, but you can use them to repeat patterns, uh, to stamp into the circles. We do have some circle stamps that fit in the circle dies. You'll see, you'll see in all the samples, we have all this stuff. But then again, we have all these words that work with those dies as well. So this is a great one for card making or even planner pages or, or whatnot. Okay, finally, travel and postage, a favorite amongst the team, I have to say. <laughs> they made a lot of samples with this, really great. Because these coordinate with, again, my postage stamp die, the smallest postage stamp down there in the set. These four coordinate with that size, exactly. I designed them that way and people use them that way and, and you'll see, really nice. We've got these beautiful four different stamp borders that we can use on anything and everything. The definition of the word travel, which is cool. Uh, we have a couple of postal things here and then of course our compass, which is really nice, a vintage compass. Okay, Oof. that was a mouthful. All right, so now I wanna share all those beautiful samples. And I'm gonna start with, because we started with the paper collection and I have no idea when we started because I'm doing this pre-recorded. So I may go over, we'll see. <laughs> uh, to showcase the paper collection, the very best I know how would be to show you this little mini album that I made. Okay, and so I used the entire paper collection with very little scrap left over to make this handmade book. And I will have a class, it'll be an online Etsy store kind of situation where I'll sell the tutorial for this because I know a lot of people are gonna ask. It's a very pretty album um, and it's very basic at this point. So it leaves a lot of room for you to do some stamping and embellishing and adding to. But basically what we have is a very repeating style here. So uh, again, you saw the cover, it has that beautiful cabbage rose on the front. It has the border dies there, a little stitching. It has the classic alphabet. It has the stamped butterfly, the bigger one. Got some strings here. And then just some more of the paper, but this is all the paper from the collection here. Okay, and then again, when we go on the inside, you see the paper there on the left. And then each one of these is a pocket page that has one of the fancy cutaways on the front of that pocket. And then, of course, one of the cut aparts from that one paper that has all the journaling fits in the pocket beautifully. And then at the top of the page, we have a slit that creates a pocket for some pretty tags. I use Esther's dye to make the tags and then my paper to embellish so that's kind of fun and then on each page also there is a side loading pocket that has just sort of a uh, rectangle piece here for photos or journaling I put a little bit of ribbon and as you can see I stair step the ribbon each time we go down so that is exactly what's going to happen on every page so I'm just going to flip through very quickly and show you it's just sort of a repeat of the same exact thing I might change up of course the paper but also some of the doodads on the tags and I may or may not try to get all these back in these pockets we'll see we'll see how it goes uh, this one comes out with this paper on the front and there's always paper on the back it might be the same it might be different this one has another pocket, of course, same, and then reveals this pretty paper. And you have your journaling card, and you've got your pretty tag. That's that stained glass paper. Music note on the top, the border strip. Okay, and the side here is just one of the papers. I just kind of cut the uh, journaling part of one of the papers out to put on there. So that would be great for some hidden journaling. Again, another pocket, same thing. Beautiful paper. Sometimes there's a border over here on the left. I didn't mention that on some of these. Actually, each page has border. 
and then a tag, another tag, pretty. I'm just going to tuck that in there. And then this one. Okay. There's that B paper, really pretty. You got your ruler down here. And another tag, of course. It's a super easy album to make because it just repeats. Once you get down the construction of the album and cutting the pieces, it's super easy to make. So here's another one. And the tag looks like this on this one. Okay, and then the side is this pretty pattern. And then the last page is this one here. Okay, so that's my little mini album, but let's look at some other things that really showcase the paper. So we have this big, beautiful card, Wishing You Joy. So this features so many things here, not only the paper collection and fussy cutting that huge butterfly, isn't it beautiful? I put a little wire uh, antenna behind the butterfly there and I've added some sparkle. I think I feel like this is, yeah, this is embossed. I did it a while ago, so I can't really remember. But there's the classic alphabet and there is that one piece of paper that has all those white doilies in the background. So I used one of the circle dies with the starburst to cut two of those, one out of the doily paper and one out of this ivory cardstock I'm using to make a word that isn't in one of my sets, right? And then Wishing You was in the set, of course. And of course, all this pretty paper. And there's one of those borders. Actually, there's two there layered together. Super fun and pretty. And then this beautiful thing was created by Rihanna. So she's used a lot of the border paper on the front. This opens up this way and look at, she used the succulents here using all kinds of my paper. One of the stamped clocks back there. She's used some of the, some older dies here, my lace borders to trim it out and here too. But you can see there's that doily paper. And then this opens out and she's used the stamps to do happy birthday and the bee. And then this opens out. She's got like two little flaps here, which is really cute. Look at that. They're like little pockets. And she even has like a little journaling card in each of those little pockets. Super cute idea. So well engineered. She has a little, the little half butterfly, the sideways butterfly, I should say, over here. And then she created a little shaker situation, <laughs> which I think is so fun from the large butterfly, the layered butterfly set. Got the butterfly up here and the bee down here and then made that shaker and then use the little dingbat fonts over here just for a little treatment. I see the border here. I missed that earlier. So she's really got it all going on in this one. I just love it. So awesome. Okay. What shall we do next? Gosh, there's so many things. All right, let's go to... So this is both the, the die set and the stamp set. So the circles, um, circles and the banners and the ribbon set, and then also all the dies that go with that. So there's stamps and dies here. Uh, and of course the Everyday Words 3, very happy day. And then the classic alphabet, I use the numbers just turn different ways here. And this is very dimensional, as you can see, all the cutaways I use, the circle dies from the set to pop this up and make it kind of a layer that you can see down into. Just using up all the elements in those circle dies and stamps was super fun. So this could be very masculine, uh, very nice Father's Day or birthday card for a man. Uh, let's see. And then so if you have done something like this, then you will have leftover circles, of course, from that paper. So you could always pop them onto a little envelope. You could put a gift card in here. There's some stamping on some of these pieces. And I did a little pre preparation of a double label here, a circle label here, and then it's your day. So if I were to put this together, uh, I do have uh, foam tape behind these and you can pop all this up and make a really cute little gift card holder with the scraps from this card. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, again, with the stamps, <laughs> I made a stamp background. 
I just grabbed all those dingbats and those circles and things and created my own background. And it's just super fun. You know, I didn't think about it too much. I just quickly stamped a bunch of stuff and cut out the paper and put it on the front of a card. And so we have our classic alphabet. We've got that chain link from the border set. And then, of course, my postage stamp die. And in the background is stamped the word, the dictionary word for travel. And this is from my layered labels from my second release. So that's a fun card for dad. And then, of course, using uh, the circles, circles, banners, and ribbons uh, set, and then of some borders, I made a couple of cute little tags here just to show you the possibilities with that set, just to work them together. It's super fun. These would be great to pop on a gift for a guy, a girl, it doesn't matter. And um, you can just see there's like a lot of red, white, and blue happening here, which is great for us here in the States, but really it could go for any time of the year. Um, you know, if you had a relative that just placed, you know, or had a good birthday or had a uh, great competition or something, you could put that on a congratulatory package, something like that. Uh, so these were really fun to make and mix and match together. Okay. So much to show you. <laughs> okay. Gosh, so many wonderful samples, you guys. Okay, Twiggy Things. So this is a beautiful card from Cindy. Uh, Cindy used some nice, looks like some either textured cardstock or maybe it was sort of in some embossing powder that has like a a texture to it. She added some gems on here and made just a very simple pretty card sending a happy hello and then the um, kind of badge design back there with the die. Super nice. This one is from Amy. She made a very simple love card with the heart and she spelled out love with the classic alphabet. Again she has used the postage stamp die and she stamped very lightly in the background the definition of love from that one set. But you can see she's even embossed the bow on the twiggy wreath. The bow is very, very good with the wreaths, as you can see here. So this one is from D, and she made a planner page. You see the holes over here on the left side. So this is a full-size planner page. Isn't that pretty? So she's incorporated a lot of things here. She's got the heart wreath. She's got some stamping back there with that postage stamp die <clears throat> with the flowers. And she's worked in the succulents over here, just the pieces of the succulents and no pots to add some greenery. Uh, she added the teeny tiny little flowers from the succulents and pots die set, which is so pretty. She's got little beads of white in there. And then she spelled out love notes with the classic alphabet. And there's the fern. And there is, of course, this is the paper. And she's got one of those borders on the right side over here. Really pretty. This one is from Rihanna. She used Happy Anniversary, which is beautiful. She used a lot of the paper in the words here, in the background here, and even in the twiggy frame back here. And then she put that vintage uh, photo in the middle, which I think is great. Uh, it looks like sort of an olive gold colored shimmer cardstock that she's used here to layer all this up to make these flowers. And she used that same color for the card base back here. Just beautiful. And of course the border and what she did here, instead of adding a border, she just cut it away and put the paper down. So that's a negative space in there, which I think is a great idea. Okay. These are Twiggy things too, but these are also a lot of those little stamps that I showed you. And these are by Anita. So she made a whole bunch and I just think these are the cutest. And look at, she even puts a little stand on the back, like a picture frame so they can stand up. But look at how beautifully she's colored these in and layered these up. She used the small postage stamp. She used the dictionary stamp back there. Just beautiful. I'm just going to show you all of these. Some of these are just this blue on blue, two-toned. Same frame each time. Sometimes she just puts some adhesive on the back so I can use them on a card. Sometimes they're little stand-up frames like I showed you before. But aren't these wonderful? And they're all using that same frame. Her coloring is just perfect. I love it. So those were by Anita. And then these three, I made sort of a card set. These are from me. And just really to showcase some fussy cuts that are in the paper. And then of course the twiggy things. 
And I just added some ribbon. I did a little bit of stitching, but this is all my paper here, the background paper all in here. And then of course, happy birthday is from that one stamp set with all the circles and the dingbats and stuff. So there's that one on the inside. Did I do anything inside? Yeah. Okay. So this shows you what I like to do on the inside of my cards. You always have a place to write, but you don't want to just pop a plain piece of paper in there. So this is a really nice way. I just kind of notched out the corners on this one and inked the edges. And so now I have a place for my message. So there's that one. And then this one is very similar, only it uses the heart different butterfly. I got some burlap back there and some ribbon and of course my border, my zigzag border is worked in there. I did the zigzag on this one as well. These are all quite similar. So this would be a lovely set to give away to somebody. Um, and I know just who I'm going to give it to. My mom loves getting my cards to give away to friends. So here's another one with the butterflies sending a happy hello and the other twiggy frame in the set. And this one has a little bit of cardboard you know, corrugated cardboard back there. Kind of fun. And once again with the journaling card. Okay, that's mostly twiggy things, but there's more. Whew. So much, so much. Okay, this is succulents and pots. So let's let's just isolate. These are from Cindy, and she made ATC cards. See her little ATC stamp on the back? Arts and trading cards, and she wrote. Um, her name and all the information, but aren't these fun? She did these on really dark backgrounds. She used the fancy overlays and then she used the succulents and pots. And these pots, I want to ask her what these are made from. It's some sort of really cool textured cardstock. It has like a, a bump to it, but different color to it as well. And so she's added little flowers, super pretty. Here she's used a different overlay. Each one has the four different overlays. And she's colored these succulents really nicely and she's mixed and matched. Super pretty. Just love them. And then this one here. Nice, right? So ATCs for sure. And then this one is from, oh gosh, it's so dark. I'm pretty sure this is from Amy. And this is a just because. So she used an older stamp set. Let's see. I think it's Amy. I'm pretty sure. I hope so. <laughs> Sorry, Amy. Definitely use the border stamp here, the cutaways here, the succulents and pots, and then um, my older stamp from last time with the sentiments. And again, another succulent set where she's actually used the dies as stamps. And I got to find out how she did it, but maybe she made little stencils and she colored it in, but pretty cool. And so here's some little borders here that she's die cut stamped and then she's added some really shimmery beautiful green like embossing powder and even on the pot here she used one of the borders from the die cut set to add to the pot which I think is really cool. All right this one is from D, and she did a very simple clean succulent card but I just love how she added the borders like this off to the left. So there's plenty of room here to add a sentiment, but she does have some nice coloring on this pot here. She's doubled up on these particular succulents to make it even taller and added lots of extra flowers. Okay, and then this one is uh, one that I made. It was just sort of a random thought like Rihanna did. Uh, I die cut the borders away and use the negative space, but then I popped some back in that are colored with sort of a yellowy tan color. Just playing around, but the succulent here is popped up on a, mm, that's the second to the smallest postage stamp die, which is stamped with the travel dictionary. Um, lots of fun coloring in the succulent and adding the borders to the pot. And of course my classic alphabet. All right, this one is super fun from Anita. Look at this, she made sort of a, a quad fold little stand up thing with all the succulents. And I'm not sure why, but we're going to go with it. Happy. Uh, she used the Q instead of two P's, but it's still a very cute, happy home. I think that's really sweet. And she's incorporated a lot of things in here. And then you can see that those journaling cards are the background and the postage stamp is the very base. So I just think this is so clever what she's done here. And then the back, is just some stamped things from my last collection or the first collection on the postage stamps as well. So there's places to write things 
or adds photos or whatnot. Okay, more from Anita. These beautiful little, they're like ATC size. They're so pretty, but she's layered up all kinds of lovely things here and stamped the borders and, uh, you know, popped up the pot here. She's dressed everything up really pretty. I just love these. And you can barely see it here, but she's used the fancy cutaway as a background on this one. So nice. And I love the colors that she's used here. Okay, and then this big giant card I made, this one is huge. It's a little bigger than a five by seven, I would say. It's about five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And it just showcases all the five different ways that you can do the succulents and the pots. And then I have with sympathy in there. And I use the fancy cutaways as a background treatment. So I did them four times. And then just to kind of cover up all the little themes, I used one of the border dies with the dots on it there. But you can see all these pots have been stamped with that one die or that one stamp set that has all the border stamps to it. So very fun. Big card. And then finally, I just want to show you really quick on the succulents and pots, how you can emboss those pots to make them really cool and almost realistic looking. I was playing around, of course, with my embossing powders and came up with a couple of really fun ones like that. Some of these have speckles and all kinds of texture to them. This one is a favorite. Really fun. Uh, you know, whether or not there's an actual pink and orange and yellow succulent, I don't know. doesn't matter, right? And then this one is um, just your regular pot with the embossing powder. It looks a little funny on camera, but it's got a nice embossed glaze to it. And then these two are just about the same. Uh, I just use the stamp that has the little tiny straight lines in it to stamp on the pots. Okay. Oof, I should have brought some water in here. <laughs> All right, let's move on to more of the fancy cutaways. So fancy cutaways. And, and you're going to see things mixed in, of course, like the postage stamps. Now, this is from Marha. Beautiful. She's got some splatters going back there. The postage stamp die. You can see how the cutaways work great with the postage stamp dies from the first release. And then these beautiful postage stamp stamps, which uh, the team just had a great time coloring these in. This one is from D. Again, stamping, layering. She's got the B on there and the pretty paper. She's even got the rope border added there. Just beautiful. And she even made like pretty uh, bee stamped vellum envelopes for some of her things. Uh, this one I made is a shaker using the fancy cutaways. A Happy Father's Day card uses the borders here. And this is the uh, other border, uh, which you'll see when you go to play with it that you can use the negative space. So I just kind of used two borders and put them together. So it looks like a whole different kind of wavy thing. It's kind of fun. And so there's all kinds of sequins in there. And then of course the inside has that journaling card. Uh, another cutaway here, this is flat on the card, but I popped back in some of the pieces from different colored cardstock just to give it a little bit of interest. Uh, but you can see this is a very masculine type of card. I would say it's got the rope and the waves and then the compass, the ship's wheel. All of this comes from that one set with all the circles and the sentiments. So that's fun. This one also, happy birthday. And then this is a more uh, feminine, I would say, comparison to that same card. Same kind of layout, just different papers and different stamps makes it a whole different thing. Uh, so we've got the B up there and I've popped up that cutaway to make a little dimensional. Thank you. And the dingbats and all the different layers you can get. That's three or four different layers with the circles and the stamps. And then the postage stamp back there, of course, the double border and the B. Had to have a B, you know me. Okay, what else we got here? Okay, more cutaways because these are just gorgeous. Look at this. And this is such a combination of so many different things. These are, again, from Anita. So the cutaways, the postage stamp, the B, you know, the first prize. She's even used the little succulent dies from um, the Twiggy things set and made them into little flowers. So that is so pretty. So, so pretty. Here she's done the big bee and the crown. 
and that beautiful fern and so happy and then you see the fancy cutaway back there she's stamped it with the dictionary she's got it on the uh, postage stamp background another beautiful one it's time to celebrate on that wavy banner she stamped the clock a couple times beautiful coloring on the butterfly and that other cutaway back there these are so pretty and they all coordinate see and there's one more here that kind of goes along with it with another cutaway and she's worked in some cool twine back there for texture really really pretty so those four really go nicely together and then Anita also made these which I think are awesome look at this so she's look at she's cut away kind of that three-dimensional bit you know, that we used to do back in the day I just love it she's cut out that lighthouse colored it beautifully and layered it on top you got the ship's wheel the bingo the postage stamp everything's going on here I just love it and then same with this one with the sailboat and the air post um, her coloring is fabulous and then of course all this layering here with those labels and banners and circles and then the fancy cutaway okay uh, the layered butterfly so check this out all white I think this is Marha no Cindy I'm sorry this is Cindy look at happy anniversary everything's in white isn't that classy so so nice uh, I think this would be pretty just to flick a, a little bit of silver and gold specks all over it for an anniversary card. So, so pretty. This one is also from Cindy. This is uh, one of those step cards, which I think is so clever, so cute. Stands up really pretty, but look at she's used the butterfly and colored it uh, underneath and that beautiful cherry blossom paper and, of course, the fern here. This one is definitely from Marha as well, and she's done a lot of black and white, but then she's worked in a little bit of craft, or uh, actually it looks a little bit gold here for that twiggy frame. And then stamping and some splattering, just very classic looking, beautiful, tall card. This one is from Jacqueline. Isn't this beautiful? Look at this. So again with the butterfly, she's got some embossing. She's got little gems all around the leaves here. And she's created sort of a, I need to look up what she did here again. She told me, and I'm sorry, Jacqueline, I don't, I didn't print it out what you said you did here, but it, it's not the die. It's like she's made it recessed, like she embossed it, but then she used the underneath of the embossing. It's just it's so cool looking. And of course, she's got it on the postage stamp frame. And she's got Anniversary here, which is in sort of a really pretty copper color that matches the inside of her butterfly. So pretty. And then this one is from Mariana. Isn't this pretty? So she's got the succulent pot there, but then she's fussy cut out some flowers from that cherry blossom paper. She's got her butterfly coming in here. She's added some gems and she's stamped on this little border. She's included some ribbon, and there's the fancy cutaway back there that she's kind of sneaked in sideways. Really nice. This would be a wonderful little cluster to put in my junk journal. Uh, this one is from Anita. Look at how beautiful. I love her color combinations. So she's definitely utilized the paper in the background there, but she has colored it a little darker, I can tell because this is a very soft tan color, but it looks like she's added some orange accents. And I don't know exactly how she's done it, if it's marker or pencil, but it's just beautiful. So now it ties in wonderful with the colors that she's chosen for happy anniversary. And of course her butterfly and her beautiful flowers, which she's kind of glazed over here. And the twiggy wreath that she's layered a couple of times. And there's a little chain. Ooh, okay, and then this is a tag that I made really quick um, just to kind of show you the alphabet. The classic alphabet is just so handy for single words that maybe aren't in one of the die sets already. The double little border um, die down here, of course, the postage stamp, and then the ferns I did in pink just to be different. There's some of the border there, that little rickrack treatment. The pattern paper, of course, is from the paper collection, and then the layered butterfly. And then one more tag with the butterfly, and this is also by me, and you can see that I did not glue this part down just for some added dimension. I did some stitching down the middle just to be different, and I spelled out fly free, 
use the stamp for love in the background of this torn piece. Of course, this is a stamp from the set, and then the fern is back there on the pretty pattern paper. Okay. I mean, there's just so much more. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I, I don't even know how long, when I started. This has just got to be so long. Uh, this is by Mariana as well. This is a little cluster that she made, which I think is wonderful. She incorporated so much of the paper. She's got some texture in there with some burlap and lace. And then, of course, the bee is stapled in the middle. This is also, I believe, by, yep, Mariana. And she's done a Happy Father's Day card with those postage stamps. And I just love what she's done here with the definition of travel. So nice. This one is also by Mariana. She just makes these wonderful clusters. Yeah, so beautiful. She's used my uh, original doily die back here and then all kinds of stuff on the front. Wonderful. Lots of stamps, lots of paper. This big, beautiful one is from... Rihanna. Got a couple of things from Rihanna. She's tucked a little thing back here, but she's used all the paper beautifully. And then look at all the stuff that she made here. So she made this wonderful pocket thing, which I love. She's used the stamps on pattern paper and the B there. And then she made these little ATC size postage stamp elements to tuck inside of all the little pockets. Wonderful. And when I said, oh my gosh, that was genius that you did that with the circles inside the circles in the paper, she said, well, that was just a happy accident. <laughs> so I love the colors that she's used here too. So pretty with that red and that olive green and then the succulents. Okay, let's see. I showed those. Another cluster from Rihanna. This might be one of my favorites. I'm going to steal it. I'm going to put it in my junk journal. I just love it. So pretty. Look at that. There's that stamped rose in the background. So beautiful. Lots of lots of stamping, but lots of layering of dies that are just kind of snuck in there. So pretty. And then this is also from Rihanna. This is just a flat, but I would put this on a, a card to my dad or my brother. Super nice. She's got a lot of grunge going on here. A lot of layers. Looks like texture paste. It's rusty looking. Super, super nice. Okay, and then the last, well, I, I have so much more yet, but this category is kind of like all the things combined, right? So a lot of stamping and a lot of layering up of stuff. So this is from D. She made a box card. I'm pretty sure this is um, Yosette's new box card die, if that's what it's called. But she made it into a Happy Father's Day and just did all kinds of wonderful things here with the stamps and the dies and the paper. I just think this is so wonderful. And then, of course, it all folds flat. Oops, there's a little note on the back. All folds flat to fit into an A2 envelope. Uh, this one is that beautiful um, stamp from the one uh, Love and Roses set. And then Love This is in there as well. This one is by Marha, and she did a little bit of stenciling from the Fancy Cutaways, which I think is great. It's just a soft pink in the background. It's beautiful. This one is from Jacqueline. It's sort of like, almost feels like a um, like glassine envelope. It's really cool the way that she made it. And you can see the stitching and all the stamping and the like kind of crinkled up paper. And it's sort of got like a waxy feel to it and all this layering of stamps so pretty all these fun little matchbox are from d she used the stamps which fit i guess perfectly onto little matchboxes i mean these are real matchboxes there's the stuff and the matches are in there <laughs> but isn't that a cool and cute idea even if you don't have uh, matches in there you could put a little note in there or candy or something like that very clever and then she made a larger kind of matchbox and I don't know if this was a die or not, D, but um, this does slide open, right? She's done a little stamping there. She's got the paper. She's got the, the border done in like a silver and colored in that pretty stamp on that one. 
These are from, oh gosh, are these Jacqueline's? I'm so sorry, I pulled them out. I'm pretty sure these are from Jacqueline. They're, look at, they're playing cards, but they're ATCs basically. So she's really gone at it with paint and had a lot of fun creating a lot of texture, coloring these in. Um, I think these would be fun to trade. I just love what she's done here. It's beautiful. Okay, and this is also from Jacqueline. So pretty. It's a planner page, as you can see. And she's used those stamps back there, embossed beautifully. She's got borders here. She stamped the definition in the background. She spelled out butterfly and, of course, colored all those beautiful butterflies. And I'm going to say, if not alcohol marker, some kind of marker, because they're just beautifully blended. And she included a little extra baggie of, of some for me to play with that are just gorgeous. I love her coloring. It's so, so pretty. Uh, this is also, this is from D, And there she is on the vellum again. She stamped some bees in black and white, I see. And then she just kind of put the pattern paper in the back so you can see through it, which I think is beautiful. And another uh, vellum envelope she stamped. And another beautiful card. This is also from D. She's got a little wax seal down here. She's done a lot of wonderful coloring on here. Used the rope border to make a border around this whole image. Just beautiful. And then these are from Anita. Same stamp, just colored two different ways. Some speckles of white paint on there, but just, just so you can see how very different they can look. And then this one is also from Anita. She's made this really clever little pull-out card. I would think it's a card. It's really nice. It's got vellum she stamped on. She spelled out high on that one. And there on this one, she used the dies for a little pull tab. She's used the borders. Really, really cute. And then these are three ATC cards that I made with a lot of the stamps and some of the border dies. And then just some fussy cuts from the paper collection. Super fun. All right, what do I got left? Oh my gosh, have I done it all? No, I haven't done it all. Uh, I still have to show you, I have some from the team that was not able to um, ship me their samples. So I don't want to forget them. Sometimes I do tend to forget. But this is a sidekick uh, layout that I did just to kind of showcase quite a few things in the collection. Uh, of course, there's that chain link in the silver. We've got the classic alphabet. We've got those travel kind of stamps in the background paper. Um, the word special, let's go, and ahoy are in that one stamp set as well. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this one. And of course, I used my postage stamp dies in the back there. Okay, so what I didn't want to forget is, and let's go right to it here. Uh, samples from the girls who could not ship things to me. So this is by Lazana. This is a tag. This is one of Yosette's tags. It's beautiful. She's got all kinds of stuff going on. And I said, please tell me what you did here. And she said she dipped the tag in distress oxides and dried every layer in between. After that, I stamped with the flower stamp at the background with a stamping platform because we need to stamp it in the same place again later. Then I used the Distress watercolor pencils directly at the tag, blended it with a small brush, and after that I put the tag ba back in the stamping platform and stamped another layer. Super pretty. I hope that makes sense. It's really, really nice. And then she has a little trifold here that she's used the fancy cutaways and the Everyday Words 3 for happy there. Of course, the succulents and the pots and some of those stamped borders, which I love. All right, and then we have Tina from Canada. Uh, Lizana, by the way, is in the Netherlands, and then uh, Tina is in Canada. So she made this beautiful, love this. These are all A2 cards, I think, I'm about to show you here. Um, but she is a very colorful, cheerful card maker, so I just love it. And she uses some little clear, uh, like, pearl kind of dots on there as well. But look at the way she's colored that butterfly. I just think that's so pretty. And then we've got this rainbow card by Tina as well. HBD for a happy birthday. So clever. And also by Tina, this happy birthday. She incorporated happy, but then birthday from an earlier set and then worked in the succulents and pots with that twiggy frame. Love that. And then this beautiful card 
that just says happy but has that really pretty stamp of the roses um, kind of collage on top of what she stenciled from the fancy cutaways. And then of course she stamped the dictionary in the background paper there. Love that so much. Okay, and then we have some things from Jackie, Jackie Jasper, who's in England. And Jackie's style is very clean but colorful as well. So she's used, she spelled out hugs from the classic alphabet and then she's utilized those borders like crazy. And I just love it. She mounted everything on a black background. I think that's just awesome. And then you're amazing. So again, amazing is not in one of the everyday word sets, but she spelled it out using the classic alphabet. So it's perfect. And then your is one of the new words in the, the everyday words three. Uh, she's used the circle, dies, and stamps there to make that really fun background and then added some stars. And then she has this sweet sending a happy hello succulent card. She just has, has the nicest touch with dimension and layering. I can see that she's layered two different colors in those succulents and really made those pop. And then this one is a Happy Mother's Day card that she mounted on my pretty pattern paper, but then she's also put a layer of torn kind of raggedy edged vellum underneath, which is always such a nice touch. And then she has Happy Mother's Day spelled out and then those um, little succulent flowers. This one also by Jackie, your lovely, she spelled out. And she used one of the fancy cutaways and um, the, like the silicone pad or the cushion pad that you use when you're die cutting, when you don't want to die cut, but you want to add dimension to make a, almost looks like an embossed background out of that fancy cutaway. I just think that's so clever. And then here, I knew someone was going to do it and I'm so glad she did. Also by Jackie, she used the dingbat stamp set and she made the coolest background and she's got little gems it looks like in the center of each one of those little flower shapes and a simple thanks and a border and the butterfly just cut out of white. I just think that's super nice and I think I think that that is everybody. So we'll come back to me just for a second. I have no idea how long this is going and I I'm gonna make a sample. If it runs over I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just having a lot of fun and I want to make one more thing for you that I have ready. So hopefully I haven't gone too much over. I'm going to switch to my make and take. So tabletop. It's not really a make and take because I'm making it. You're not taking it, right? So I thought we would make just really quick a shaker card for Mother's Day. I've got most of this ready, so hopefully this will go kind of fast. Um, I've grabbed some stamp sets. I've got Happy Mother's Day already cut out and layered. I have a card base here for a 5x7. On the inside, I've already put this. So there's some cardstock back there and then this paper here with the rules already in it, ready to go to write your message. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to pop this olive colored cardstock on my base. Okay, and then we're going to put this pretty paper. This is the one that has the rules and the doily and has that on the back. We'll pop this on next. Of course, you could pop this up with foam tape if you wanted, but I'm just going to adhere this flat because we have a lot of layers coming. All right, does it matter how we want it? I think we just want it that way. Okay, so there's that. And the plan is... If you've never made a shaker card, this will be new to you. I know a lot of you are familiar with it. So what I have done is I've taken the postage stamp set and I have the piece here. I've taken the largest one and then the frame that's the next smallest size in. So it came away from over here, right? We have two, three pieces per postage stamp. So I have taped these two together so that I make a frame. Otherwise it would just cut a whole solid of the postage stamp, right? And I've just used like, you know, removable tape so that when I go to die cut this, it die cuts the same every time. So what I did is I die cut one from the pattern paper that I know I'm gonna see on the front of the card. So that would be this one, it's that honeycomb blue 
So there's one of those. And then I cut 10 more out of just like a similar color cardstock. This is like a light blue, just like that paper. And I stacked them all together, glued them all together. As I went, I was writing a T at the top just to make sure. And I have a T at the top here. And then that way they're all in line together and they go in the right place. So I have this big stack here. And so what I want to do is I have my little cutaway here for my shaker. I already have adhesive on the back. And then I've got a piece of acetate that's just a little bit bigger. So this is going to go onto here. And then this is going to go onto here. And then this is going to go onto here. So let me do that really quick. And I've used, of course, Elizabeth Craft Designs, the really skinny, whatever the thinnest one is. I don't have the packaging anymore. I think it's three millimeter. And you can hardly see this acetate on my table, but I'll put it on a white piece of paper. Maybe that will help. And so I'm just going to put this right smack in the middle. Oop, 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 crooked, crooked, crooked. <laughs> Hold on. It wants to grab. It's sticky. That's a good thing. Okay, just sort of in the middle. And so I did it mostly around the outside edge, and then I did one piece of adhesive right there. Okay, and then this is going to go on here. So I've already got my tape here. Same tape, just really close to that inside edge. And so we will tape this. I gotta scoot this in front of me just for a second. Hold on. I think that's gonna work, I hope so, we'll see. Okay, so now we have our little clear thing so none of our little shaker bits fall out. And then we have our decorative paper, which I also have adhesive on the back. And I have a T at the top, so I remember how it goes on, just in case it wasn't perfectly in the middle. That kind of helps me. Okay. Again, I got to pull it down in front of me just to get it lined up just right. It may not be perfect, but you get the idea right now. It's hard for me to take too much time <laughs> when I'm doing a live, but okay. So there we go, super pretty. And then we just have to put adhesive on the back of this, but we have to wait until we do our shaker bits. Now, what I have here is fussy cut flowers from one of the papers. I already stamp and die cut the larger B. I die cut small postage stamp and then the frame that goes, or the inside piece, the mat that goes in there. And I wanna stamp that with this pretty which one is this? This has the rose and the dictionary in the background. And I was going to use the stamp platform, but I'm just going to kind of go for it, I think. Hold my breath and see if I can get it to work. I'm just going to use black. And I don't, I don't think I'll color it or anything. You can always color this if you want. I don't uh, think we have time for that. Now I'm going to get my head way down here because this is tricky. Hopefully I get it in one shot. Okay, well, I'm a little bit off on this left edge, but that's where I would ink the edges. Fake it till you make it. Okay, and then this would go in the middle of our postage stamp. This would be pretty to color in with those blues like Anita did on her samples. And I can always do it later. So I'll pop that in there and set that aside for just a minute. I do have one more stamp over here I was going to use before I got too far. Because my idea is this. I'm going to have this just ivory cardstock in the back of my shaker. Because I want to see all those bits really well. Make sure that's still the top. Yep. So that's going to go on there once we get all of our little bits in there. Um, but I'm going to bring it down here because I want to start adhering some of these things. So see how we have this cut off because it went off the edge of the paper. I think we'll get that on there first so we get the right positioning. We're going to hide those blunt edges. Okay. 
kind of under here. And then I've got this other little flower. I think I'll put here. Yeah. I did kind of have a plan. I'm not sure if I remember what it was. Oh, well, maybe I wanted this up top. Yeah, I did. I wanted it up here. Put that there. Whoops, there we go. This is just sort of a placeholder. Okay, and then my bee's going to go up there, and I wanted to put a little postage stamp over here. It's going to be overlapping a little, so we'll get that down too. You could pop this up and put this on top if you wanted. I'm just going to put it right there. Uh, the B can be popped up with a little foam tape, I think. Okay, cut away that corner so we don't see that. Okay, I think we'll put that up there. That's been stamped in some blue. Okay. Happy Mother's Day goes last, but before I do anything more here, I want to do just a little bit of stamping. So I've picked that Flourish stamp. There's two, but I picked one of them. And I've got like a olive green colored ink here. This is Verse Fine Claire Shady Lane. And knowing that this is going to go under here, I'm just going to stamp this like coming out from behind there, just like that. Okay. Whew. All right, so now we can get our little shaker thing going and get this on here and be done. So this is going to go, we can get this down next. Because this is just in the background. And we have to just make sure that we cover up those cut off flowers. We can scooch this way just a little bit. Okay. Make sure that's okay. Looks good. Okay, lovely. All right, so now it's time for shaker bits. Now what I'm going to do is open out my card because it wants to tip a little bit. Because you have to dump all these goodies. These are little beads. Kind of a yellowy honey color. And then I've got these little pretty things that are greenish bluish like my paper back there. I don't want to put too much. Now these are fun but they're not going to work with this card but look at there's seashells in there, there's um, starfish, there's little gems and nuggets in there. Super pretty. Um, maybe some sequins. Just a little bit. We don't have a lot more room so I don't want to put too much. And these are just random things I have here in the cracker. Okay, so we want to flatten that out a little and then get adhesive on the back of this. I think I'm just going to go for it with liquid glue since it's at the ready. Okay. All right, you might see my head. Sorry, I got to lean over. That might not have been enough shaker stuff, but you know, it is what it is right now. That's fine. Just to get the idea. Okay, well, that's fun. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah, there could have been more in there, but that's okay. Uh, so, Happy Mother's Day might go. I think I'm going to just float it up there and we only need adhesive on part of it because the other part's just hanging over. So let's do happy. We'll put happy way up here. Hopefully it's straight. Looks pretty good. Mothers. Let's see. We're going to end up covering up uh, our pretty flourish, but that's okay. Okay, mothers, kind of squeak that in there close. Make sure that's straight. Looks pretty good. And then day. Put that up 
to that same. Beautiful. Really pretty, right? Super nice. My mom would love getting that for Mother's Day. You could do more down here with stamping if you want, but that's that's it. Okay. Oof. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I didn't even have any water here at the ready. I really should have had some water. Uh, but I do thank you for joining me. I hope you like the new collection. I hope you like everything about it. I will look forward to looking at the comments uh, once I'm done with Create and Craft at the three o'clock three o'clock hour. I'll be able to sit and have my little glass of something to celebrate that everything is done and look at your comments and watch for questions and get back to you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for hanging in there. I think I went way over my hour, um, but I hope you like everything. Thanks again. Take care.